The Duchess of Sussex has delivered an astonishing snub to the Queen's highly regarded doctors, insisting she doesn't want the men in suits to oversee the birth of her first child. The Mail on Sunday can reveal that, in a significant break with royal tradition, 37-year-old Meghan has appointed her own delivery team, led by an unnamed female doctor. Royal household gynecologists Alan Farthing and Guy Thorpe Beeston, who is a specialist in high-risk births, attended at the arrival of all three of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's children. They are among the best in the world but neither has been given the leading role in Meghan's care. And she has politely declined their services as lead physicians for the birth. In keeping with protocol, the Queen's doctors cannot be excluded completely. There will be some role for them, and should something go wrong, as it did with the Countess of Wessex, the Queen's doctors would step in and take over. One source said, Meghan said she doesn't want the men in suits. She was adamant that she wanted her own people. It did leave a few of us a little baffled. Another said, it is slightly surprising. These people, the Queen's doctors, are the best of the best and when it comes down to it, their role would actually be very limited in the birth itself, assuming all goes to plan. It is understood that meetings to discuss the birth will be held as the due date approaches with the baby expected next month. Other royals to have given birth under the care of royal gynecologists include Princess Diana and Princess Anne. Sources close to the Duchess stressed the personal nature of her decision, with one insider saying, above all, this is her birth, her baby, and she must do whatever feels right for her. How could anyone judge her for that? There is concern however that Meghan's choice will viewed by some as unnecessarily extravagant. The Queen's physicians do not charge a fee, yet taking on a new team of specialists will cost tens of thousands. A source explained, working for the royal household is seen as an honor and attracts other high-profile fee-paying patients. Sources close to the Duchess insisted last night that her preference has not caused any offense. One said, no one has thought anything of it because it really is ever so personal. In another break with tradition, it emerged last week that the Duchess has chosen not to give birth in the Lindo Wing at St. Mary's Hospital, Paddington, which has been used by several other royal mothers. It is likely Meghan and Harry will choose a hospital nearer to their new home, Frogmore Cottage at Windsor, for the birth. As the baby will not be a direct heir to the throne, the couple are said to believe they should not have to pose for the world's media with the new arrival. There is expected to be a brief announcement shortly after the birth with a picture released later. It's understood that Meghan does not want the pressure of dressing up and posing just because people think she should. The source added, it is impossible to compare to the Duchess of Cambridge because she is married to the future king. While their focus is very much on Harry and Meghan at the moment, this is not going to last, particularly as the Cambridge children grow up and become the core royal family. Meghan follows a number of other royals to give birth at a later age. The Queen was the same age when she gave birth to Prince Edward, the Countess of Wessex was 38 when she had her daughter, Lady Louise, and 42 when she had James, Viscount Severn, while the Duchess of Cambridge was 36 when Prince Louis was born last year. Queen Victoria had her youngest child when she was 37, 